In this video, we'll learn how to persist emails in our own database for analysis and compliance reasons. Resend is a fantastic communications platform that deals with email and it's really easy for developers to send email, integrate with any language or framework and track different events that happen when people open or click on emails. We'll be using webhooks in this video to save any events into our database. We can see here an example of one of the event types, for example, email clicked, that we get data about the email and what was clicked. We'll be using Terso as our database to sync all of our webhooks and we'll be using the Hono web framework to process requests from our webhook and update in our database. The description for links on how to install the Terso CLI, but we'll be creating a new database using the CLI and he will give a name of our database and the replication group. Once that's created, we'll then shell into our database and create two tables. We'll first create a table for our events and a table for clicks. We'll look at these in a little bit more detail later, but pause the video if you want to take note of the schema. Now we use an NPM, we can create a new Hono project and we'll just give our app a name, select the Node.js template. You can use another if you want to deploy this to a different platform or use a different runtime. But for this example, we'll just use Node.js. And once your project is set up, we'll then open this inside of our code editor. And here we can see we have a simple source index.ts file. But before we go any further, let's install the libsql client. The libsql client is the client that we'll use to connect to our database hosted with Terso. Now, before we continue, let's get the URL to our database or the connection string and then the auth token. We can do this using the Terso CLI to show the URL and to create a new token, passing the name of our database. Now let's import create client from libsql client and instantiate a new DB instance. Passing to create client will pass that URL. You'll want to use environment variables depending on your platform, but for this video, we'll just insert the strings as is. If we inspect an example payload of our webhook here, we can see we have type, created at, and data. Let's destructure those from the request JSON that comes into our request. And if we don't have any of that, we'll simply return an error. Then inside of a try catch block, we'll return a success message once all of our code connecting to our database has succeeded. And if there was an error, we'll return a 500. Now, if we run the development server using npm run dev and we copy an example payload instead of a new tab, we'll then test that we can submit a post request to our endpoint with a payload. And here we'll just use pb paste and paste in the example from the resend docs. Now, if we skip to the good stuff, here we can see inside of the data, all the different keys for the values that we want to store inside of our database. So we'll destructure email ID from to subject and created at from the data object. We'll then await db execute. We'll pass to this function, both the SQL and the arguments. Inside the SQL, we'll insert into our table for the columns, and then we'll pass the values. And here we're just using positional arguments with our SQL. So in the arguments array, here we can pass all the different values that we have from above. You'll notice for created at that we have when the event was created, but then the email itself also has a created date. So we'll need to destructure and rename created at to be email created at for the email created at value. Then we can pass everything else as is. Let's now create an event ID and we'll use the UUID library to do this. So using NPM, we can install UUID and we can install the types as a dev dependency. Now with this installed, we can import v4 as UUID v4 from UUID. Now, once again, let's start the development server and instead of a new tab, we'll paste that event. We open our database here. Here I'm using Dataflare. I can see that we have a new entry inside of our events table. Let's now insert some additional rows into our table, go back to Dataflare and we can see here that all of those events for email.sent were inserted into our events table. But we'll notice that we also have a clicks table and Resend tells us when a user clicks on a link inside of our email, this will invoke an event with Resend. So inside of our code, we can destructure click from the data. And then if we have a click, we can insert a new record. So let's check that the event type itself sent to our endpoint is of the type email clicked. And we have a click value. We'll then insert into the clicks table are different values. And because we created a unique event ID, this is what we'll use to associate this record with its parent event. Make sure to use the table name clicks. Now, if we copy the sample request payload for email clicked, and we paste this, and we post this to our endpoint, we'll now see we have a new row that is connected to our event through that event ID. 
So far, we've been using the terminal with a static value to post to our API. Now let's expose our endpoint through a tunnel to the web, and here we'll add the URL to ngrok to resend. Make sure to check all of the boxes and verify your email if you want to get information about those emails that are opened or are clicked. With that saved, if we skip back to the resend onboarding and create an API key, and we create a test email, once this is sent, this will then trigger a webhook and send that event to our API that we have running locally via ngrok. And here we can see inside of the list of events that were sent, we have two. Now, if we go back to our events table inside of Dataflare, we can see those two events that were sent to us from the resend API. Now, at any point you want to analyze the data inside of your database, you can now do that for all of your different events and clicks. And here we can see a simple select query. We can see what emails were open and sent.